<laughs> now we go. And you're going to hear me breathe a lot because I'm, you know, I'm not young anymore. I'm going to dance. So, yeah, and I also actually went here one year at, at the choreography uh, department here. And I'm here because I teach a lot. And I've been teaching, performing, working in the field for 40 years. And um, not until now I know what I am. I'm a somatic researcher. <laughs> I've been doing that since I, before, I, or during I went to school in the ballet academy. I remember laying on the floor, just feeling how it traveled. And I love ballet, have always loved ballet. Went to the Cunningham School, went to all the workshops in the 70s in New York with um, Simon Forti. We're part of groups. We improvised all night, went up in the morning, had breakfast. I caught the very last section, I think. <coughs> of the parties in New York when you go out to five parties and you just dance. <laughs> you know? So I have a very, and my, my biggest memories from, I used to take Maggie Black, you know, for you who know who Maggie Black is. And she was, I used to stay to look when the New York City ballet dancers came in because it was fascinating. There were only like five of them. And I, I remember, I'm saying this in honor to these two. <laughs> I can't even remember the name, it's terrible, my mind is going. Uh, because it was, um, it, it was like, just like a port bra And the guy did this. And she goes, stop, stop, stop. And she always walks like this. You can't do that, it's nothing. <laughs> She's like, just do a port bra and the guy did. It was just like very simple, this and that, and it was so strong. And that, that was one of my learning moments. Two seconds. Stay with me forever. And another thing also she said, I do the same sign, I'm, I am the one-sider person. <laughs> As you all know what that means. <laughs> and he opened them too much. No, 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 that's too weak. And he brought them forward. And I use that all the time. But, I, you know, I have other stuff that I use them for in that. And I, I'm also here because of that and because of Trisha Brown. I have to speak about Trisha Brown. I took her workshop at Van Centrum. I think it must have been 1972, and we did Locus, which is based on the cube. And, oh, 10 minutes, you have to tell me, so I have... I'm a time person. I time everything, count everything. But it's a cube um, because she is polydirectional. Many directions at the same time. And in order for her to really try to, co not codify, but catch and teach what she was doing, she did the cube in, uh, I think it was done in 1971, called Locus. And she was not the only one with the cube at that time. It was Soli Witt, it was Bruce Naiman, it was Yoko Ono. I mean, we have all those things at the same time that happened in New York in the 60s. So it's not something out of context. But it was, um, she marked the box with the numbers, one, two, three, all the way around, nine, all the way around, top and bottom, and center. She wrote her, her um, she put the alphabet to the numbers and wrote her biography. Trisha Brown, born, born in Aberdeen, Washington, and so forth. And you know, now I'm 57, so it's, this is quite a few years, but I still remember the first move. In, in this box. And this is the one that I showed in class today, which was unrelated. That one. Because it, it has about elongation, fall, suspense, lines. I talk about emphasis, and I believe in rhythm. Visual rhythm and actual rhythm. And the visual rhythm would be in the same time frame. You do that you would do something different. It would be different, or the time frame would be different. So the lines in space talks. And Trisha deals a lot, I'm already, <laughs> with negative space. She talks about the negative space. So when you wor work with he her, you learn all these things, so even like a, a classical master. She kind of is a guru with no, I could say she has no, she says herself, she has no technique. But in order to do her technique, which is a lot, oh, let me do something. These are my partners. So I'm going to use my partners. This is Glacial Decoy, 1979. 
and this is pulling the dog. This is bees. And this is gravity that she doesn't talk about, that you have to figure out when you dance with her. You have to figure out yourself how to do it. And if you notice, it's a, um, now I forgot where I was. This is a little knee first, arms then. This is knee first, knee arm. So you have to figure out arm, leg, arm, leg, arm, how it goes. And I have to do that again. Because this is also something that has to be counted out when you learn it. And this is a little hang up before you go. So it's all visual and all, ooh, all um, <laughs> coming back. <laughs> so that's Gretchen Vicar. And it, it was based on using the egg structure. Uh, like as the dance should come, go like this in the first one, like this is the stage. She's on, now she's off, she's on, like this. And then um, center duet. And the center duet was made by another Swede, Nina Lundborg, and uh, Lisa Krauss. Lisa Krauss is small, fiery, and Nina tall and elegant and they had a duet, but it was based from instructions. Like, uh, as I move your, uh, what was it? Move your spleen, heart, and something else. And this was the sun going up. <laughs> and then you continue. And the beginning is, uh, is really actually fun. This is the leg. So you have to stand, and then you have to just go. <laughs> just really be, be, be really true. To it. And when you break down in terms of coaching and teaching, and that was the beginning, you really have to go, you have to break down everything. I'm going to do another one, which is simpler. This is certain reset, which I also should show you. But in breaking down this, you ha I count actions. Each dancer had to find their own way. I count actions. I count hand, foot, hand, foot, hand, foot. And then I go, and then I make sure I can see. Now, I could do that without using gravity, which is very different. Then you lock, you lock it. So I've learned that through a terrible accident, <laughs> I would say. Certain reset has a basic phrase, that's how she works. Basic phrases, load your mind, go. And this, I, I started 83 when they started making certain reset. And I, I sat a lot. And I felt I got a lesson in perception. Because the basic phrase, it, move, it moves again in a stru round structure between decoy and set a reset, she had made up a loop that was just center. And now she went back to set and reset to create a structure, walls, to deliver solos and duets, can I say. And she still worked on that later because she thought she wasn't successful, and I think she was. But the basic phrase in set and reset, the first one is this. This is just basic phrase, and the, it moves down the wall. This is up, and I'm coming to you, Iskra, <laughs> and Jenny, and so forth. And the thing is, you, when you teach that, I don't really teach her stuff anymore, but just for now, she, students do this. Making sure they have the form, making sure they're perfect, that they talked about. And it's a little, this line continues as you move back, which creates space in the shoulder joint. So it's a, and timing-wise, it's a little longer, but not long enough, enough for a beat. It's just like, whoa. And then here, if I really let go, my arms will go like that, if I really let go, by the structure of the skeleton. So I talk a lot. Hey, 10 minutes now. 
Oh, shoot, I'm going to continue. I get so involved with her all the time because she, I really feel that she is an amazing mind. And I have a lot to be thankful for. But I had a very bad uh, accident, I would say that, because I be worked on something like this. Um, and my hips was locked. So my spine got totally curved this way. I was like that, and I was like this, because I did not follow. I did not follow the energy out. You know, I had a contra energy, because that's what we all are taught in some way. So I did Alexander, and before that, I've done other stuff. You know, like the, I never did body mind. I didn't really like contact, if for, even that toe closeness, if you come up for a moment, closeness, because if you are, you can just use the arm. Mm -hmm. In contact, you may tend to be like this. And I was into, like, relax. Yep, no, a little bit more, just here. There. You see, you can see it. It has a different energy field. Yeah. And thank you, <laughs> my seat. <laughs> and it's like, um, then contact too became like a form, a structure that you have to be fitted into. And I couldn't do that. So I've been moving into, then I got two, I could like manipulate myself to death. I felt head forward and up, gold through my elbow, water in my spine. Like I could like, I can use all of this. And I just didn't know who I was. I didn't know the authentic self. So I just started, uh, I started running and doing something called Zen imagery exercises by Mazunaga, which is like yoga exercises. But you just, I said, like, I'm not going to put any pressure. I'm just going to sit and breathe. And unfortunately, we were, I was in um, France. So it was like wine, or, you know, grapes. And <laughs> so I, I did this exercise under a big oak tree. So <laughs> that, that pleasure point, I'm sure, added to my relaxation. <laughs> but, but through that, and they hear us like different exercises, but through those, I, do, I used to do them every t third day, the third day in a, in a workshop, because everybody's like this. So it's about listening to the body, allowing the body to relax, and coming in contact on a very internal level. Because I believe in the internal-external relationship. And in order to do that often, so you're not like out, just out, but you have to have this going on. So the, the heels are really important to me. And I, I discovered that through Krista Parkinson, who is here on the 20%. Yeah. Because we, I did something called Blue's Yellow Shadow, and she was like, and I had a part that they should just walk around with their hands, you know, typical, like, postmodern. <laughs> yeah. And she said, like, you know, I don't know. And if something was wrong, and then I said, just think about your feet when she was doing this, and it just changed. And I was like, there you go. So I feel like that process, the research in, uh, in what to, in to be authentic, how to be authentic, how to find, I've been always interested in, you know, and I still am. It's not, and I mean, you know, like that. And now I, I blanked out, like, like on stage. <laughs> you get a blank out, inside out. It was something I was talking about. I wanted to go back to Trisha. Anyway, I have to look. I do have notes. <laughs> but I don't think I have it in the how to execute movements, we're going into movements, I want to come back into myself. Um, so let's leave that. I don't remember what I was going to say. Gonna say. So let's move on. And uh, I wanted also, I did a lot of Tai Chi for a while. And this is in Reggio Emilia also, in Teatro Valle. You start like this and you go like that. And then I came here and then I went like, oh, wait a minute, ballet. <laughs> you know, so it's all related in some way. It's, that's why it's a body, it's a body, it's a body. Okay, five minutes. Um, <laughs> now, now I'm talking about, now I'm doing, um, uh, what is it called? Firebird. And can you just, I'm going to just show you what I'm, uh, this was done on the Gothenburg Opera Ballet in 1997, I think. This is what I'm teaching in the morning. <clears throat> I have to go from before, otherwise I can't prepare. I'm old.
I was going to say, in the, that's why I said you've got to fail. Because they do not go with direction, flow, and everything. Because you have to start with center to go up, and you have to let go. You have to work with the space, elongate. You have to place, but let go. And you have to, re you have to suspense, not for the suspense in itself, but for the feeling it gives you. <laughs> <laughs> and here, in this jump, they never get this. And the reason is, before you reach, and then you reach again, so you get space, and when you stop re reaching, it moves in. So you have to do very little as a mentee <laughs> to come up. And then you really have to move. What I also see a lot, in general, is this. And that doesn't work. Spine. And I say, don't replace. Just add information about the spine. So you need, really need to move the center so you can move it. And so you can go if you want to. So I tried earlier as a dancer, interpreter, to te learn everything, because I wanted tools. I don't want to be limited. I wanted to know as much as I could of everything, so I didn't have to go, I can't do that. I don't know what you mean, you know? <laughs> so that was very, <laughs> so that's where I come from. So I, I had to devise a teaching method, and I call it complementary. I didn't know, it's just, I think it's a stupid name, but I didn't know what to do because it was like a compliment to whatever you do. And it's a warm up. And it's a lot of breathing coming up. And I always said, which is from, I'm not into martial arts. Uh, like you get a little breathing intention, and as you release, you let go and you expand. So you don't let go, you let go and expand, and it's all direction. Intention, what do you move first? Knee, center, foot, heel. Oh, one thing they have a really hard time with. <laughs> it's this, and it's heel, knee, head. Heel, knee, head. And you, have, you can't give up the first direction. You have three directions. Continue that, continue that, continue that, and go. And they, it tends to be like this. And then knee, and it goes round and round and round. So, and, but that takes time, so I let them be, and I add a little information, add a little information, and slowly they get it, by separating. And I'm very fact-oriented, I talk the whole time, like, um, let's do this thing, two direction, one direction, way to the head, way to the, of the arm, feel the elbow, sit with the knee, step on to the corner, to the corner, more energy and more space, one direction, open your back, shoulder blades wide, like that, the whole class warm up through. And now, okay, five, one. Okay, I want to show you this. Because this, I can talk during the count. I'll go with the, what did he say? Because I was so tired of everything. I asked Object these people. Of your Two from Twilight Tharp, and I then a circus person, a clown. And we used Gio Don Giovanni. I was only sitting saying, no, I don't believe you. That's not good. And I had to say different words. To the two dancers, I have to go heavy, light, Everything is and to, I love that. And I, I had to go to Colin, sad, in order, you know, have, like I had to use emotional words for him to actually understand. So this is all about uh, authenticity. What? What? How to perform, for me, Fire. what was true. And in so this piece is also Lisa Osberg, another swing. They went to Rida Kershkova. There are so many mountains. There are so many mountains to be climbed. So many rivers. Oh, so many rivers to be crossed. So many conquests to be made. Andiamo! All through improv. I this is not an improv, but it's all through improvisation. Yeah. And we had two texts, Don Giovanni the libretto yeah. and Don Giovanni uh, the text of Moliere. And then we had some other, a little bit of Shakespeare and like this. And I used adjectives a lot. You know, like he's mischievous, he's this, he's that. And She's Don, uh, Donna Anna, no, Donna Anna, what's uh, Elvira, Donna Elvira.
And I use the, um, the music. And I am so glad to have the witness. It starts to my with, inner soul. Nah, you know. And, and I use. And the real motives that oblige me to do things. And then I. Um, that's Lisa. And this is actually an undressing. But you have to tell me, because I'm just letting it go until you tell me not. She's done an Anna with every other woman and every other woman. <laughs> I didn't mean to show this, but <laughs> so yeah. should I stop it? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It, oh, you want yeah. to conclude? No, I, yeah. No, yes. I think I have. That was my conclusion. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Irene. You're welcome. <laughs> Very interesting. We have a few minutes for one or two questions. I need to help you with this one. I, oh, yeah. I heard this one. Well, maybe I should turn it off. Like this. No, you need to answer. I need to answer. Okay. Do we have it? <laughs> <laughs> it was. Okay. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what I, f I, f it's what I say. I, wa I wanted to go up in the background. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me. Okay, oh. I'm sorry. We have a personal okay, meeting. So, um, <laughs> so all these embodied memories yeah. that you are using in your teaching yeah. and that are helping your students devise work. Yeah, and, I, and find themselves. I think you have to talk, you have to dance with you and you, I say. Finding what, what you call the... The authentic awareness yeah. um, that you, if I understood correctly, you systematize into something you call complementary technique. But technique. That's, but you know, they yeah. want that in certain papers. I yeah, don't, it, you know, like when you, you say, know, so what are you teaching? Oh, it, I, have it, to, I have to name it? Exactly. In, in England, they use this, you know, complementary therapies. Yes. Yeah, so. I understand. It's fantastic. Yeah. Complementary. I you even it? have uh, what do you call these frappes? But my mm -hmm. frappes are knee yeah. sit bon, drop lift, knee sit bon, drop lift. <laughs> then when I do round the champs, which I do sometimes, it's all about center, and you continue, continue, twisting, twisting, twisting. But it's how to get the thing out, how to stay in the center. Did I do it correctly? Like I'm. <laughs> uh, uh, and you mentioned Simone Forti. Um, yeah. Links with, and you, you said that you kind of, that contact improvisation. Yeah. Thing. Any links with Steve Paxton, what Steve Paxton is doing? Steve Paxton is fantastic. Okay, so do he you see any <laughs> Yeah, links? he came into a, st uh, a rehearsal once, talking about politics. And he, I was not feeling too good. It was, I was dancing with Meg Stewart and Randy Warshaw's piece, you know. And it was something with a rhythm, Frey Faust. Uh, like they're great dancers, but they have a different rhythm. So I wasn't used properly. And he, and he talked about, you know, the passive and the active at that thing, and who could be passive and be active. And that was, you know, what we do all the time, you know, like, or re I call it reaction action. Mm. You know, so you have an action, you have a reaction, you control it, have an action. Then you initiate from the stomach, and then you widen from the shoulder blades all the way out, fingertip, and then also hold like this, and it's important that the knees go straight out and not go down, because then you get knee injuries. 
But Steve Paxton is he means a lot. So he's part of your genealogy. Yeah. I mean, it's my history. You cannot have an idea without a history. No, no. that's Ateo my theology I see in your body. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my history, like what I was into when I was growing up. Improvising a lot here. I still remember, me, as I say, Dan Centrum, me and Per Jonsson used to be at Drottengatan Tia, dancing our butts off, trying to be Lucinda Charles, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just one, I don't know if there is another one. We have one more, but you may finish. Just the negative, the, the negative, the idea of the negative space in brown. Yeah. And how these structures actually, so many things that you talked about, that, that, that idea of the void. Yeah. That um, the moment it is named. Yes. It, it becomes. It gives a structure to the unstructured. Yeah. It makes the unthinkable thinkable. Yeah. That is so, that's what is. And that's why we have to go to, to the edge, because otherwise you don't you know. You don't know where it's going and to And I be. learned that through a fall on ice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> that, that's why I said there is an, a strange alchemy. It's not strange. It's, of course. No, it's be I think it's so beautiful. So I, wanted, I, I said, like, I want that paper. Thank I you. And I want your, I pa your paper, I guess, the my ephemerality is, is you. Yes, so <laughs> thank you very some, much I have some for notes, giving us that. But that's all. <laughs> Last question. So this is kind of random. Yes, so but, Arizona. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're random in Arizona. Yeah. Um, for as long as you've been dancing and performing and teaching to be in the profession so long, it's incredible how you move. And I was just wondering if there's something that you developed in your technique, the way that you teach or the way that you embody the movement that's helped with your longevity? Yes. So I if there are principles that you've kind of developed or come to that have created ha that? And then the, the mm -hmm. second part is, are there I other I things forget. that you do outside of dance to keep your um, self moving so well? Or is it mainly in your own technique or the way that you've that approached movement? How I, when I started teaching, I wanted, I was very jealous of musicians who could be at home doing what they do. Not only because they could be at home, but because of the innate wanting to keep up. So my idea of teaching was to have the student not come back to really get to do the research themselves. So that's why, I mean, it's a lot of skeleton, a lot of body, a lot of figuring out, a lot of like internal, it's a, a, a internal work, but not with closed eyes. And I stand up because I started on the floor, I remember in Amsterdam, you know, you do the thing, you lay and touching yourself and it's, a, it's point work that Trisha Brown did. You know, you could see her in the wing, wing holding the points. We warmed up, laying on balls, everybody thought we were strange, you know, because otherwise it takes class. But in that, when we, we came up to move, because I moved through space, I, I talk about instant choreography in terms of lines, like you see somebody, you move, you follow them, you do something, you know, you follow, but you have to keep your eyes open. You have to have a relationship. Because I see too many dancers that are in Never Everland. So it's really like meeting, don't, you know, so you really can look and keep yourself. So you don't get lost in somebody and, and vulnerable. Because they talked about safety here, feeling secure. Your body is the secure. And then I used to have uh, like five objectives or something. And I say, it's to hang up your soul on. Like when you don't know, you need, you take those so you are, are secure. Um, and I don't, I have no formula more than what I do, but I'm going to think about it. I have never had the, because I started teaching this because I was asked to teach, you know, and I wanted to teach something that, that actually prepared the body for this when I was working, or that prepared me when I had to go to rehearsal, because I'm, I'm on both sides of the, of the spectrum here. You know, like, so I didn't have to be hurt. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah, we can continue talking because it's a lot. And martial arts is my, you know, like I read. I was in the hotel room going like all these Chinese. This is the Chinese thing. I, used, I did that a lot. So there's energy 
going through. I used to pull the energy up and going out. I, but I read myself to it. So they were laying by the pool, and I had these small books that you could only get in New York, I guess. <laughs> you know, I, I learned, taught myself how to think. No, I don't know if I can do it. No, I can't. <laughs> it's like how you, how you do like a, one of those jumps. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and how you are actually, you, when in the suspension, you have to kick. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then Mazunaga has saved my life. The, I would say, check him out. But I did it by myself again. I couldn't afford taking classes, not even Feldenkrais, which I like. Yeah. I Thank you. Um, uh, I think that we may close this up and you, you uh, ask a question so we get a break. And uh, we want to thank you, thank you. Irene, Irene thank you. Thank you. for a fantastic. Thank you.